<laughs> Trey Sports travels to West Africa with Johan Drew. After an injury-ravaged start to his career, the Arsenal and Switzerland defender finally became a regular on the pitch for both club and country. But his time sidelined through injury gave him the opportunity to reflect on life and has inspired him to help others less fortunate than himself. <laughs> hey, I'm Johan Juru. You're watching Trey Sports. Don't give me a ball anymore. Our amazing journey starts in Dakar, the capital of Senegal. It was scheduled after Johan had completed his longest and busiest ever football season. I had a long season, so it's a lot of, um, of, uh, of tiredness in my body, but um, never tired to come to Africa and to help my people, you know. I'm very proud that you came with and so we can all enjoy it and just uh, try to show what we do. Johan took us to see the charity he supports. He's an ambassador for the Kemi Malaika Foundation, an organization helping to improve health and education in some of the poorer areas of Senegal. In a busy two days, Trace Sports visited some of the numerous projects the foundation supports and had behind the scenes access to this amazing initiative. We traveled by land, air and sea. First stop on the tour was Gore Island, a popular destination for visitors to Senegal, located three kilometers from the capital, Dakar. It's the nearest point in Africa to the Americas and played a major role in the transportation of enslaved Africans between the two continents from 1536 to 1848. Never forget where yeah, you come from, not, and that's the the fact that I always had in my mind. So to come here yeah, because yeah. sometimes it's like for me it's different because I, I grew up in Switzerland. But so when I come back, I learn every time. So it's, for me it's, it's all a learning process to come back and see those things, and it's just an amazing, an amazing feeling because so you know that it's been a history in our African roots. As this way, with the price of a virgin girl. It's corresponds to a barrel of rum or wine, sometimes just a rifle. But the price of the Gore Goree Island was the last stage of the slaves from all over Africa before the deportation to America. Nowadays, Gore has become a mythical island because of the slaves' house that we visited earlier together. Gore has been visited by many famous world figures, including Bill Clinton and Pope John Paul II. Famously, former South African President Nelson Mandela toured the island in 1993 and was brought to tears by the experience. It's emotional and really hard for the people who visited the slaves' house. As symbolic as it is, it hurts them. It's really painful. It's very emotional to be honest. It's like, you know, it's like when people talk about it, you see that it's taking their heart to, to, to talk about it because they've been touched. I, I, I guess the, the grandparents and stuff knew about it, so it's just a, just a big thing. For example, when James Brown came to visit it, he cried like a baby. We also have the images of the Pope, Jean-Paul II, who really apologized to the slaves' house and to everyone. One of the most emotionally challenging parts of the tour is the door of no return. This is the final point enslaved Africans would have passed through before being transported to the other side of the world. I will always have this in my heart and in my head because now I have my own family. So imagine having your kids, or your wife in there and just going somewhere and you know that you're never going to see them again. So if I put myself in a situation, I would just cry because it's just, just impossible for me. So I imagine what they went through. It's just, it's just so sad. After the tour, Johan and his delegation, which included General Mamadou Sek and the ambassador of Switzerland, were invited to the mayor's office, where their visit to the island was commemorated. He's a famous footballer. We want to acknowledge his visit because he's completed the pilgrimage. And it's an opportunity for Johan to go everywhere and say, 
I have seen, I am a witness. Johan and his guests were also invited to sign the book of messages. It's just to say that you know you've been here and uh, you represent you, you represent this island. You must not forget. It's just a big honor for me to, to receive that. I wrote um, it, that it is a terrible place of memory and that I hope it should never happen again that human beings can inflict such suffering to their brothers. Several media crews accompanied Johan to Senegal. Was it more difficult to deal with such an emotional experience with the cameras pointing at him? I think it makes it more difficult, but I think that you can see that the emotion comes out as well, because I'm not going to lie, if I feel, if I feel sad, you know, the, the emotion is going to come out. So that's the thing about me, is that even if it's media or we're here to do a work, the emotion will come out, and uh, that's, just, that's just me. We said goodbye to the deputy mayor, the ambassador, and left the island of Gore. But there was a bit more than hand luggage. Our convoy was loaded up with provisions and equipment before we continued our journey by road 80 kilometers south of Dakar. Next, we headed to the fishing town of Sali, where the Kemi Malaika Foundation is based, and then to the commune of Inga Palaru, where the majority of their work is situated. We were welcomed by our second mayor of the day and a delegation of officials before we were taken to several of the locations and projects that have been assisted by the foundation. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests. All the population are very happy to welcome you to the Kenny Malaika Foundation because all you are doing in Gapar, all the population, seeing that and are very happy and thank you a lot. to the mayor the, the, in the commune of Nekapuru. It's just the way, where we are all like, I mean, where the, our foundation is, the Kemi Malaika Foundation. So we just went to see the mayor and he took us to, um, to a place where all the girls that haven't got school or didn't go to school are like, left alone, just have the chance to, to become women and learn how to cook and how to do different things. And um, that was very impressive because uh, you know, the foundation is helping everything, you know, we, we're here to help and um, that's why it's good. After the performance, everyone was invited to sample some of the food the young ladies of Inga Peru had been perfecting. Johan seemed to definitely approve. Very nice, very nice. You know, the, the nectar and uh, mango was unbelievable. The cakes were very nice, so they're doing a good